Now that the form to email script is configured, we can come back into Lightroom and start messing with the client proofing gallery setup. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've gone ahead and told the image gallery to use all film strip photos. So this is now a gallery of 35 images spread across many pages, as I've told it just to keep five images per page. And the reason I've done that is just to show you this. At the moment, this is a multi-page gallery. But when I turn on the client proofing gallery features by ticking this checkbox, all of those images are going to be collected onto a single page, and the pagination disappears. If I disable the client proofing gallery, the gallery will once again respect your pagination settings. Now the reason this happens is because the client proofing features are based on HTML forms, and those forms cannot span multiple pages. So if you're using the client proofing gallery features, you have to have all of your images on a single page. So that said, let's get into the meat of the client proofing gallery. When we turn this thing on, we get a couple of changes. First of all, we get these little red X's on every thumbnail in the gallery. We also get this little box up here, which we're going to talk more about in just a few minutes. And finally, at the bottom of the gallery, beneath the thumbnail grid, you get this contact form. So just to bring things back onto one screen where we can see it all at once in this video, I'm going to take my gallery back down to just five selected images. Now we have it all where we can see it, we can start playing with it. Let's talk about these red X's first. The red X denotes an image that is not selected. When we click on the red X, it becomes a green check to indicate that this image has been selected. The client proofing gallery will send you a list via email of images that have been selected. That means images showing the green check. Now if you don't like the red X and the green check icons, there are options. So over here, the on icon is by default the green check, and you have five different options to use for that icon. And then the same goes for the off icon, which is by default the red X, but we have several other choices that you can use here. By default, gallery images are all unselected, which means that they begin in the deselected state with the red X. If you'd like them to begin in the selected state with the green check, then we have this checkbox which reads check all. So turning that on will cause the gallery to select all images by default. And then your uh, client would be deselecting images that they don't want. So uh, I'm going to turn that back to off so that we begin in a deselected state. Um, the next section of the controls are these sliders, which are for the appearance of the contact form. So you can change the width of the form. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a border around the form that you can change. And it looks a little wonky when you move the slider, but as soon as you let go, it'll re-render the page and everything will look all right. Um, we've got padding on the form, so you can adjust the amount of space between the border and the form fields. You can round the corners on that form and there's also the distance from the grid. So if you want it a little further away from your thumbnails, you can increase or decrease that just a bit. Finally, there's the input border slider, which is for the borders that go around the uh, individual input fields where the client does the typing. So you can see how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and set these to values that I like, which for this design is going to be a single pixel border. I think I'm going to go with just five pixels of padding. No, I want 10 pixels of padding. I'm going to round the corners just slightly five pixel rounding and the distance from the grid I think is just fine. Then we have color selectors of course um, we can go ahead and change the box color to match the rest of this. 
I'm going to change my input text to black. That's going to be the text that uh, shows up in these boxes when the client is typing. The input background is going to become white. Uh, the input border is black. I like that. Red warning text. The warning text shows up when there's a required field that's not shown or filled in and uh, they click the send button. So the name, email address, and telephone fields are required entry. Um, and if they're empty, then the form will not submit and they'll get this warning text, which is by default red and completely illegible. So I'm going to go ahead and make that black, which should show up a little nicer against that green. So there you see that when I click send without these being filled in, uh, we get the warning text. It says can't be empty. So those are the colors. Um, we have additional color selecting boxes for the, uh, the send button. So I'm going to leave the text white, leave the border black. I'm going to change the background to the same red that we're using in the header. And then I think for the hover state, I'm going to go with black text, black border, and we're going to use the orange color that's in the background. And if I want to see that in action, I just need to reload the gallery. And you can see now that it flops between red and orange when I'm hovering on it, which I think looks pretty nice. I might actually change the orange to blue later, but I'll decide that when I uh, get around to it.